hello and welcome back to Method of the Meadness. I'm Burley Mullins, and today we're gonna wrangle us up some yeast. As you heard from the intro, uh, this episode is all about uh, wild yeast and one of the many ways to collect. The season was very unseasonably rainy, so anytime my schedule lined up with um, a friend where I was going to show you one of the overnight methods of collecting wild yeast, uh, it ended up raining us out. Shame. Uh, in the future, I will do that again, uh, or do that for the first time, I guess. <laughs> uh, you know, as weather holds out. Uh, but for now, we're going to go with one of the alternative ways of collecting wild yeast. In this case, uh, using an apple that we got from an orchard uh, directly. Um, so there was no washing process, it's not covered in wax. Wild yeast loves to settle on fruit. So, that's what we're going to be using. Um, just a second while I wash my hands, I want everything around the uh, apple and what I'm using to be as clean as possible uh, so that we just get what's currently on the apple skin. So just a moment. All right, now that I've washed my hands, thoroughly. Um, you know, we'll go ahead and get to the next step. I've already sanitized the uh, uh, mason jar. So I'll go ahead and get that set up. I'm going to start us out with uh, one cup of water because uh, I do need to dissolve honey into it. Um, I'm making a pint of must to serve as the base uh, using the same hon honey that I plan on using for the mead, uh, blueberry blossom honey in this case. Um, you don't necessarily need to get that specific, um, but as close to the final fermenting sugar that you plan on using is what you're going to want to use to propagate your yeast. Um, I'm adding 0.15 pounds of honey because I'm shooting for about uh, 1.040 gravity in this one pint of must. Um, I found that um, between 0.33 and 0.35 pounds of honey per gallon of total must uh, gets you um, to uh, 0.01 gravity, uh, each additional one, uh, each additional unit. There are no units in gravity, it's a ratio. Um, which is kind of a pain when I'm trying to explain things like this, but that's what it amounts to. I have a, a formula that I've gained from experimental use. There are still some variables that aren't 100% nailed down. I might put that here for you. It's just a standard y equals mx plus b uh, formula for adding honey and getting the gravity you desire. <laughs> but 0.15 pounds of honey. Oh, sorry, that's <laughs> not nearly enough. Accidentally did 0.015 there. <laughs> no, I want 0.15. That would have been very disappointing if I had stopped. There we go. 0.15 pounds of honey. And for now, that's all I'll need the uh, scale for. Okay, I'm gonna let that settle a little bit so I can actually measure it. <laughs> it's a little frothy. So you might be wondering why I'm collecting wild yeast. Um, you know, when I've not done that before on the channel. Um, and I've actually not done it before. <laughs> um, well, I came across a mead that was actually described quite well. The flavor was described beautifully. Um, and it calls for wild yeast. Uh, I'll... <laughs> um, once this is, uh, once the yeast is properly propagated, you know, we'll get started on that. Um, 
but it's very exciting, a chance to do this, uh, which is something that I've wanted to do for a minute now. <sighs> you know, when you look at this, you'd think sparkling mead would be foamy. But, uh, you know, once it becomes alcoholic, you know, it, it doesn't have, it doesn't retain that foamy head the beer does. Well, I'm going to add water and get it to about a pint. At this stage in the game, it's okay to be a little bit off in the measurement. As it propagates, I'll be adding a little bit more honey. And this, I believe, is raw honey. So there may even be yeast in this that can also propagate. Whatever yeast survives, um, if any competitive fractor yeasts end up in this, you know they'll end up beating out the others. Uh, but, you know, I don't think that'll happen. By the way, please invest in these sprayers. They're an absolute lifesaver. I've got some Santa Clean in here. Um, it's an absolute game changer on uh, your sanitization protocols. Uh, makes things a lot easier. Instead of having to like pour a large amount like into a large space, you know, you can just spray down the sides. You're really just sanitizing the surface. You don't need a giant volume of sanitizer in it. We just need the peel from this. Um, you know, all of the yeast will be settled on the outside. I have a little tray here to uh, collect the peels as they come off the apple. Um, and I just chose apples because it was easy enough for me to go to an orchard and get them. Uh, it was convenient. This will work with uh, you know, most edible fruits. This makes for unappealing YouTube. And really, the reason we have everything cleaned is that we don't want to introduce anything else. We want what's on the surface of this fruit right now. In all my other videos, I always sanitize my adjuncts and my other fruits and spices, um, unless I'm doing a boil, uh, because we want the yeast that we choose to be what does the work. You know, I choose based off of flavor profile, alcohol tolerances, sugar tolerances, things like that. So it's a little fun to be doing it on the wild side for once. Now there might be some uh, tannins that, I, that get introduced from using the apple skin, um, but it's such a small amount and it's just in the starter. So I don't know if it will actually influence the final flavor of the mead. We'll be on that journey together. That's all the peel I need. I've already thoroughly washed my hands, and I'm just dumping them in here. And I'm giving it a swirl. Tent this with aluminum foil. We're going to be breaking a lot of rules with this one because we are trying to force it to stay in the yeast propagation stage for the next oh, 48 hours or so, uh, depending on um, what comes up. I'll keep smelling this. Um, and then I'll look for sediment as it uh, continues. And hopefully, we'll get a nice yeast culture without any, uh, any nastiness going on. I've been Burley Mullins, and this has been Method to the Meatness.